was really pleased for our players tonight to get this win. Uh, it's a happy locker room right now. And this stems from one thing. We have a lot of respect uh, for Rio Grande Valley. We think they're a really good team with good players and a great coach uh, that's had some experience in the Big 12. Um, they obviously came in here with a, gate, a great game plan. They played really hard in the first half, so I give our guys a lot of credit for the second half we played to kind of separate. Um, but I wish these guys the best of luck the rest of the season in their conference. You know, in preparation, you kind of get a great feel for a team. You watch every game they play, you study, you read, and you kind of like, um, there's some teams that you kind of start liking and following. And this is a team that I'll follow the rest of the year because uh, I have a lot of respect for how they play. And I think Coach is building something special there. Uh, I'll predict it now. This team will be in championship type games in the near future because he's building a program. Um, so pleased for our players tonight because we just beat a team that we have a lot of respect for. Also want to recognize our crowd. Um, you know, neck and eye must have been 10, 11,000 people there tonight. As we build the program, um, nothing's more important than attendance. There's a relationship in college basketball between attendance and winning. We don't have to look too far in this league, right? Kansas wins, Kansas sells out games. And um, I've always had such a big vision and belief that we can win big here and uh, sell out games. And I think that we're starting to all see this on a night where we don't have our students in between Christmas and New Year's. Um, just very, very appreciative of all the people that came to the game tonight, spent their hard-earned money to support our team. It's something we never take for granted. Our players appreciate it, too. There's a buzz in our locker room right now about the crowd we have tonight. And so I just once again want to thank all of our fans uh, for coming out and supporting our team. For both you guys. For both you guys, Coach mentioned the second half. What changed, especially defensively? They shot the ball pretty well in the first half. What did you guys do to change things a little bit in the second half? Um, I think in the second half, uh, we came out with a, you know, a different mentality. Uh, Rio Grand Valley, they really came out in the first half and they really uh, gave us all we could handle. Um, you know, they were really aggressive. So second half, we just had to uh, get back to being us. Uh, we made a decision that we had to get back to playing our defense and uh, playing the way we like to play. A uh, follow-up question for Tariq. Uh, you got 10, I think they got the 10 minutes stretch. It was about four minutes there in the second half. We got a couple of the dunks and got the alley-oop from, uh, from Culver. Um, how much fun was that little stretch where you really got going offensively? Um, it's always fun where you get to uh, do things like that. Um, my teammates are great at finding me in, uh, in the positions where I can uh, use my athleticism. So, you know, uh, Matt found me, Culver found me in that stretch. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just great, you know, fun time. We all get to enjoy, it, um, you know, it just gives us energy and momentum. Uh, Deshaun, 13 points and 10 rebounds for you tonight. I uh, believe that matches your high point total here and is your high rebound total. How has your, um, how have you kind of progressed in terms of feeling comfortable in a new program? Uh, I, I feel very comfortable on the court now. Uh, every day I just tell myself, just go out there and, and work hard and play hard and, and, and do my role, play my role. How much do you think your role has changed from the beginning of the season to now ending non-conference play? Um, I don't think it changed at all. I think I'm still doing the same thing that I'm supposed to do when I go out there every night. It's just play aggressive and play basically, yeah, just play my role. Um, just for starters, Coach, uh, what was the reason Norrance didn't play tonight? Just uh, Norrance has been playing with a lot of pain. Uh, toughest guy I've ever coached. No disrespect to those other guys. Um, as tough of a player as I've ever coached. I've coached some other tough ones. Um, he just uh, – he's having some problems with his hips, and he um, had an injection to kind of relieve some of the pain. He could have played tonight. He looked me right in the eyes. Coach, if you need me. Um, but I was more interested in trying to kind of rest him coming to the Big 12. So, um, but I think after the season, just kind of like with Keenan last year, the whole story will come out. But this guy's playing um, in a lot of pain, but he's just a warrior. So just a kind of a coach's decision tonight to give him a little bit more rest coming after a uh, shot that he got to kind of relieve some of his pain. When you analyze non-conference play, where do you see the most growth from your team in these 11 or so games? Well, I think obviously we've proven we can be a great team defensively. Uh, the guys have really bought in from that first 
closed door scrimmage to the exhibition game UTEP to the early incarnate word into our trips Kansas City Miami protecting our home court here against some good teams I think our defense has proven to, to it's growing uh, it can be even better so I've been really pleased with that side of the ball then offensively um, you know we've done this before you take new players and you try to get them to play together and uh, it's never been an excuse for us well we've only been together one year you know with Matt and Tariq trying to get them comfortable um, I think we've shown the ability where we have different guys that can step up. Obviously, Deshaun Corporu, great example tonight, a double-double. You guys know how hard it is to get a double-double in college basketball. It's very difficult. Uh, that's Deshaun's talent. So I think offensively, I've been pleased that we're a work in progress and we have this huge ceiling that we haven't even touched. And then defensively, we continue to be committed to our identity, and that's being hard to score against. Coach, I was going to ask about uh, Deshaun. Obviously, you can touch a little bit more on his first start uh, and um, just kind of his performance out there tonight. You guys know we got uh, some key players starting. Really doesn't matter. Sometimes these guys are in the game by the first whistle. Um, you know, in my mind, Deshaun is a starter type player. Uh, right now, he's playing the role that we're asking him to play, and he's embracing it. So, uh, with Deshaun, it starts with you know he's experienced last year playing a level end for Steve Green. He's been coached at a high level. Um, he hasn't been babied. He's been told the truth. He's been coached hard. Uh, he's been taught how to play the game. So here the tradition, uh, the transition wasn't as big as it is for some players because he's already had, you know, Big 12 type coaching. Uh, he just continues to, to do the things he needs to do. So, you know, we're always searching for that second, third, and fourth score in the Big 12. you got to have four or five guys that can get it done. Impossible to win a Big 12 game if you have one or two players. You have to have that third or fourth guy. And Deshaun's another one of those guys that uh, I'm thinking that we can begin to start really envisioning him doing it on a consistent basis. Obviously, Coach Wells out there tonight. Have you had a chance to maybe speak with him and obviously the support that he's already showing for this program? Yeah, it's been great. We've communicated a lot, uh, mostly through text message and things like this because he hits the ground running with recruiting and all. Um, so I, I look forward to working with him. I, just like we had a relate, great relationship with Cliff, we'll have the same great relationship. Nobody pulls for the other sports. Uh, more than our program, not just me, our players, um, especially, you know, college football. That's kind of my deal. Um, I'll try not to kind of, you know, I've always said before, Coach Myers does such a fine line. He's like a great friend. He's loyal. He helps us, but he never makes us feel like he's pushing things on us. It's, it's a fine line. Coach Myers is the best. I'll try to do that with Coach, you know. Like, I've got some opinions on college football, but I'll try to keep that to myself. Chris, uh, at one point in the first half, UTRGV was – eight out of 11 from the field. And then after that, they were eight out of 38. Was there anything you felt like changed? Um, yeah, first of all, I think you got to give them credit. This is a team that came in here aggressive, a team that has a coach that set these guys up to believe they can win. They got good players. Um, no disrespect to some of the other teams that come in in the non-conference schedule, but there's some games that you understand, you know, everything in the world's going to have to go right for those guys to win, not this team. We were prepared to play a 40-minute game tonight. We had packages in to try to win the game late. We should have a lot of respect for them. So I think at first they were making plays. They were sharing the ball. They were getting wide open shots. I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit for the way they played. I wasn't pleased with our energy. I thought we looked a little dead-legged out there. Uh, to be expected coming back from Christmas and all. Um, but they sure didn't look dead leg. And this is a team that um, I know Coach won't make excuses, but I think they had some problems with their flights. It's my understanding they took a bus all the way from the Valley here. Um, so I, th I give them a lot of credit. They gave us all we could handle, especially in the first 10 minutes of the game. Since you uh, talked about it at length yesterday, their uh, uh, aggressive defense and all the turnovers they forced, what did you, how did you feel like y'all did against that? I thought we did better uh, than we did against Duke. You know, I think 15 is better than 24, but a couple of them were uh, casual late. But um, I thought we did a better job in the second half with our ball handling and kind of an emphasis. If we can get to where we can play to media timeout, to media timeout, four, eight-minute stretches with no turnovers, you know, I think we're hard to play against. Uh, when we start handing the other team the ball, it's just, it, it puts too much pressure on our defense. It's just not in our DNA. So I thought tonight, uh, far from perfect, still have a lot to work on, but – at least tomorrow in practice, we don't have to look through 24 of them. You know, that takes a long time. So I'm glad I don't have to do that again. And a uh, follow up on Lawrence. Uh, his hip issues originated when? I'm not sure on that, Donnie. He's, uh, you know, he's a big guy. He's changed his body several times in the weight room. I think it's just um, some issues that he has. So common to a lot of guys playing at this level. Uh, Keenan, great example last year, Zach, from time to time, guys get. 
you know, different kinds of shots to relieve pain. It's my understanding he can only have a couple throughout the season, so he just played 11 straight games and a lot of pain. This will give him a little bit of relief. Um, the plan was for him to play tonight, um, but just because of the way he was feeling, I didn't want to put him in that situation. But he wanted to play. He said he's ready to play. Uh, same old Norch. Coach, uh, because of the way uh, Rio plays defense, uh, was this game at all good preparation for West Virginia coming up? Yeah, Mark Adams says he did it on purpose. I'm not sure if I'll buy that, uh, but it did turn into a nice, uh, you know, I, there's no breaks at this level, but we've been working on press breaker. We've been working on ball handling. This transitions, transitions us, having a hard time with that word tonight, transitions us into the West Virginia game. Uh, so, yeah, like in our non-conference, I've told you before, we try to play people that prepare us. Uh, when this game became a, a, an opportunity, we just knew how good a coach uh, Coach Lou is. We, want, we always want to play against well-coached teams because it exposes things, it tests you. Uh, so this game was a good game for us. I'm pleased to win. Uh, and has the decision been made that Kevon Moore is going to play this year? He was suited up tonight. Yeah, yeah no decision yet, but we, we, you know, we'd like him to. If he can get to the point where he can contribute, uh, tonight was kind of the next step. I asked the young guy, do you want to put on the whites and go through warm-ups? So it was great to have him out there. Um, but he wasn't cleared to play today. Um, so we'll just keep working towards that. A um, lot of season left. He's continuing to get a lot better in practice. So if and when he gets to the point where we feel like he can contribute to the team um, and has his legs under him, you know, we're going to try to play him this year. How did he do in warm-ups? Anybody see him? Dunk the ball in him? <laughs> Left hand, right hand, one foot, two foot? <laughs> I can't say transition, and you can say that word. Uh, Coach, you, you listed a couple skills this team embodies, but off the court, how would you define their chemistry now that you've seen them in a lot of games? What characteristics, how would you describe them? Yeah, it's a work in progress, uh, but I like these guys. I think they get along. They hang out together off the court. Um, they all take hard coaching. You know, we don't have a program where one guy gets it A and one guy gets it Z. I mean, everybody – gets it, they embrace, they take it. Um, our older guys have kind of um, taken care of our young guys. Our young guys, for the most part, have taken the coaching. Uh, tonight, we had a great exchange in the locker. Um, I thought with my eye, Kyler had thrown a pretty good pass to Tariq, and then Kyler asked him, is that a good pass? And Tariq said, well, I, I had him pinned off. I was expecting you to go shoot the ball. So again, that's just the chemistry you're looking for, but I like the dialogue when two guys can have a conversation like that without getting their feelings hurt. Um, so I think our chemistry is good. We've got a long ways to go. You start getting into January and February and uh, playing in the environments that we're about to play in, that chemistry has got to be real. Um, but I'm very optimistic that we have a chance to be a close-knit team.